Okay, let's try that again. So apparently I set up a new development setup for Twitch and didn't have my audio setup. Sorry, uh, it was also then playing through Twitch as I was talking, which is very jarring to hear yourself. Come back through the microphone seconds after you speak. I originally started this Twitch account as a game development stream, but I just never got around to game dev. And then I took that ninja masterclass course and thought maybe I would do some game playing. And I did that for a bit, but we're back at it. We're going to start again with a game dev project. I am on vacation for this week. So my plan is that every day I'm going to be developing like it. This is my full-time job. So the plan for the stream is that I'm going to record myself all week and then I'm going to download those um, recordings and we're going to turn them into maybe some kind of some devlog uh, possibly just for posterity and maybe I'll put them on YouTube I haven't decided yet um, I really appreciate you joining me on this journey I think it'll be a lot of fun uh, a little bit about myself I went to school for game design uh, in college and then immediately left the game industry. Um, this was right around the time of iPhone and Android games really kind of taking over, but not being super high quality. And so most game companies in, in my area were just making bad knockoffs of Doodle Jump and, you know, Plants vs. Zombies. And I just didn't feel as a sort of, you know optimistic 22 year old that I wanted to participate in an industry that just felt like it was pumping out the same game over and over again and not even good games and so I sort of stumbled into a web development job and I've been doing um, application software development for startups and tech companies for well I guess a decade at this point uh, occasionally I pop back to game development just you know to see uh, if I can do it and start working on a project, uh, it's going pretty well, and then I just get distracted with things. So the plan here is that I'm going to spend the next five days working on this, and because I only have five days, I have spent a lot of time before this vacation planning everything out on paper, and we'll show you that shortly. But also, um, I'm going to be limiting myself quite specifically, uh, like drastically. Uh, the same way people would do if they were in a game jam is I'm cutting out anything that absolutely doesn't need to be done. So the long-term plan for this game uh, is that it's going to be a survival game uh, in space, uh, cooperative. But just to get the basic mechanics going, um, I'm going to remove any type of uh, netcode stuff that I'm doing. Um, some of the balancing obviously isn't going to be there. I'm using a lot of free and cheap assets from Twitch, sorry, from Itch and the Unity Store. Uh, and then I'm going to cut out a couple of features here and there. Anything that like I know I'll be eventually do, but don't need need uh, for playability. And, and then just try and get something of, not even a vertical slice, but a slice of a slice uh, done, at least a demo that I can show some friends uh, and kind of get the feedback and build off of for the next time. And then maybe I'll take a vacation again sometime in the future, and we'll have some fun there. So, um, as you can see, I've already started a little bit. Uh, this is just a basic scene. There's nothing in it but um, but the, the tile map. So we have our basic sort of ground tile map and uh, the walls. And then these little things, I think they're, I think they're technically hospital beds. Uh, we're going to use them as planters for now. This is the inside of what will be like a science bay greenhouse. The design of the game, maybe I should tell you a, little, a, bit, a bit about the story. So I was playing Fallout 76 with some friends uh, a couple years ago. And like most people, I found it a little disappointing. Um, Fallout has always been a first, uh, a single player game, first person. And Fallout 76 didn't really take, I think, all the strides that it needed to to make the game multiplayer 
Uh, it just felt like a single player game where you were competing with other people. But more importantly, it didn't feel like there was any benefit to teaming up. There was no there was no reason to pick a you know, to decide you wanted to spec into the team's medic and get all the, the medical related perks. Not that there were even that many. Uh, everyone just kind of felt the same. You Everyone shot the same guns and had the same skills. Uh, on top of that, the perk system was random with that kind of card thing, which made it even worse. But at the end, uh, I realized that, you know, I'm really interested in the idea of a game where it's cooperative, but you have to kind of pick a direction and decide this is the role I want to play on the team. Um, I think cooperative games are really popular right now. Um, I love playing them. I love playing with my friends. Maybe as a 32-year-old man, it's a great way to just kind of vibe uh, with your friends and cut down some trees and fight some some trolls. But, but again, you know, it's any game that's multiplayer can be played alone. Uh, and I think my goal here is to make it so that it's less practical to play this game alone. Um, or that there's some either insurmountable or nearly insurmountable hurdle to overcome when you play the game alone, or that or that you can get further and, and play better and, and do cooler things when you play with your friends. So the game essentially goes as follows. You are one of three characters who are on a uh, shipwreck in space. You've crashed landed on this planet. Um, you are either the team's sort of miner, explorer, resource gatherer, the engineer, builder, uh, or the scientist. And you have to cooperate with your team members in order to collect resources, uh, process those raw materials, build buildings, plant plants, collect water, do all the things you need to survive and grow and build and research until eventually you can either... I haven't decided what the end game is going to be, whether you have to rebuild your ship or whether you have to uh, just survive, just just live on the planet, so you know, you know happily until you die. I guess just of natural causes in old age. Um, so the game is going to be broken up into three different types of scenes. I had originally planned on making it somewhat cohesive and try and find a way to have all three people in the same scene at the same time doing different things, uh, and it just didn't feel practical. I might I might expand it a little bit. I think as the game engine expands underneath the UI, I might change, you know, this probably won't be obviously the the last iteration of what the UI looks like, but that's okay. Um, and so the game scene basically takes place in what I call the underworld, the overworld, and in interior. So the miner goes underground and starts collecting ores and rocks and crystals and all kinds of rare earth metals and then brings those up to the overworld where the engineer takes those metals and turns them into usable refined materials and then builds greenhouses and um, and and barracks and all the kinds of things that you would need for a moon base and then inside that we have the last scene which is the interior of this this scientist test scene here where the scientists will run around and do research and plant plants and manage um, sort of limited resources of, of water and and biomass and all that fun stuff so I also apologize for my uh, voice I am a little bit <coughs> sick right now just from allergies I took some allergy meds so hopefully my sinuses clear up a little bit uh, in the next couple of minutes I took them about an hour ago so hopefully they cut that out so We'll be bouncing around a little bit. I have uh, my main game screen here. I also have my second screen. Oh, of course, that shows up right when I do that. I have my second screen here. This is a service that I'm using called Nuclino. It's pretty cool. It's like a Coda or a Wiki. Uh, some of these are, this is base stuff that I haven't removed. But if you look at this, you can see uh, we have this nice little board. And I've broken up my infrastructure and my architecture and everything on paper kind of explained how I want things to to flow. They also have this really cool graphing tool where it takes your list 
and your sub list, then it shows it breaks everything out. So you so I someone I could <clears throat> pardon me. So somebody could focus specifically over here on getting all the scriptable objects ready for construction, and then somebody could focus uh, over here on you know what the overworld is going to work and how research is going to work and all those types of fun things. And then there's also the game design part, which just breaks down uh, how the different tech trees and things work. Um, I'm also using Trello just to sort of to keep my my tasks organized. I think this will give me a good sense of, of how much I need to do in the next, well, it's almost noon, so four and a half days. Um, I'm going to be using some other tools. I'm trying to avoid doing as much art, trying to avoid as much as possible to do any art. I'm going to download as many tools, um, assets, and resources as I can. Um, I've done pixel art in the past, but it is it is definitely not the best use of my time right now. You will also maybe notice that uh, if you look at pardon me, um, my my game, I actually have some some of it already finished. I had taken a stab at this this particular. I don't even know what you call it this game, but I've taken a tab at this project before. And so some of the code already exists. Um, a lot of it is explicitly, uh, not sorry, not, not explicitly useful. Uh, I'm not going to be reusing entire scripts, um, but I'm going to see what I can cannibalize, at least conceptually, from what I've already done. And so it looks like I've already done a whole bunch, um, and I kind of have, but... But at this point, I think, I think we're really just, it's going to feel like we're starting from scratch and then I'm just going to be copying and pasting some stuff, which the longer you're in an industry, um, you, you tend to have those resources that you just copy and paste over and over again. So I don't think that's cheating. Um, I will say that as uh, in my regular job, I work with web applications, but I think one thing that's really helpful uh, coming from that stream into game design is that I have a lot of experience still with sort of large project management. Um, so game designs, especially for, for amateur game developers like myself, tend to get a little out of hand as we just get excited and jump in the code and start tinkering. And all of a sudden it's been six months and I have part of a bad map procedural generator and, and nothing else. And so my my plan with this project was I was going to get as much of it on paper as I could beforehand. I have Google Docs and scratch pads and all kinds of doodles uh, on my computer and on my uh, notepads at home. And we're just going to try and burn through as much of this as possible. Uh, and we'll see if it is possible. I mean, um, certainly for me, maybe for somebody who's uh, better than me <laughs> and has actually been in game design for the last 10 years and didn't take a ridiculous hiatus and then try and learn it all again or during the pandemic. but. So thanks again for joining me on this journey, uh, and here we go. So um, the first thing I think I want to do is I want things to be clickable. Um, so in the long term, I will have characters, probably sometimes have drones that are going around doing the planting and the building and all that, but uh, to save myself the trouble of having to do that. I think for now, we're just going to make some of these items clickable. Uh, they're going to open a little UI interface, and then um, and then in the future when we add the game controllers or the character controllers, we can um, make them into sort of a click, whatever, you know, E button, A button, whatever button you press, uh, interactable as you're walking by. Uh, which I think will make uh, be relatively simple once we get there. Uh, another plan is I want to get something of the UI up. I'm using a, a program called Balsamic. Um, which will open eventually. And I've just mocked up something really simple. As I said, this is a multiplayer game, so there will be um, so you'll have your your stats up here. Your friend stats will always be visible to you. Um, eventually, we'll add something of a day-night time cycle just to give things a sense of urgency. Uh, and then we have some generic buttons down here. Um, 
I just copied and pasted this. Didn't really get too far with the UI, but it should be relatively the same for all three characters. And then depending on which world you're in, you might get a different view uh, with extra tools and stuff. Um, yeah, so where to start? Let's take a look at our troops. Why does it do that? Oh, that's funny. I need to figure that out. Um, I'm using Control One and Control Two to uh, to change the view of my monitor or of of, uh, of Twitch, and I didn't realize that that also changes the tabs that I'm showing on on Chrome. So that's fun. All right, so. The first thing I think I want to do is I want to get rid of these machines. I don't think we need them right now, so we're going to just hide the structure. Um, oh, that should not be. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so that's the structure. Here's our machines. We're going to do some erasing. Erase you. Why? Wouldn't you let me erase you? There we go. Erase. Get rid of all these guys. Uh, these ones are fine. I'm not going to use them for now. Uh, we'll come back to that. But essentially what we want is we want these to be uh, sprites that we can interact with. You can interact with tiles, uh, but it's weird. So we're going to make our little sprite objects and make them interactable and go from there. So uh, I forget which script library this was. Was it here? Structures. We'll just make this a base script and then we'll figure out where to put it. So we're going to make a game object. Create empty. Oh, we can make a sprite right away. Look at that. That's cool. Square sprite. Awesome. We'll call this uh, planter. And we will drag it. Oh, it should be. Where are you? Oh, no. I can't see you. That's OK. We're going to set. It says it's a square. We don't want it to be a square. We want it to be. So me, this one. Is this gonna work for me? Can I also bring it into? There we go. Awesome. So there's a little sprite. Pretty cool little dude. Not doing much. Just hanging out there. We're gonna add our um. We're gonna add this this component, and we're gonna make it um, interactable. We'll call it interactable sprite and we're going to make a new script create and add <coughs> and that's going to where did it go oh it takes a second it's to reload everything now the question is where did it put that script i believe it'll just be in assets it is so we're just going to drag that into scripts really quick before we have to deal with anything and we're going to open that up in writer if you're not familiar with game design, uh, Rider is a program by JetBrains, um, which is probably one of my favorite companies of all time. I've been using PHP Storm. Uh, it is the gold standard for PHP programming, um, and, and nothing else is even close. And But one of the things I really liked about them was that I've been paying for, for JetBrains, sorry, for uh, PHP Storm for most of my career. And every year before my subscription would run out, they would send me a message two months, one month, two weeks, and then a week uh, in advance to tell me that, you know, hey, we're going to charge you $90 or whatever I was paying uh, in a month. Just make sure that you want to keep your program. And I thought that that was fantastic. Uh, I know that a lot of companies do that now, but, but JetBrains was certainly the first one that did it um, that, I, that I knew about. You know, I mean, how many of us have ever been in a situation where we 
you know, have some subscription service and, and then you completely forget about it and then all of a sudden there's $180 on your credit card because you just signed up for, you know, clouds, cloud photos. Um, oh, boy, lots of text messages. We'll check those out later. Okay, so what we want is a method that we're going to call um, void uh, interaction. Maybe we'll put some parameters in there later. And then I believe what we also have to do is we have to make this um, clickable. Oh, God. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this an interactable sprite. And we're going to have this method called interaction. And this is what's going to be triggered by the actual interaction. This is then going to pass that on to uh, whatever the actual thing is. So in this case, it's a planter that does some stuff. Sorry, my dog just got back from a walk and he wants to come say hello to me, but he probably will not be able to. I apologize then for the barking. Maybe someday I will introduce you. Um, so we're gonna have our actual interaction. We're gonna have a temporary uh, click handler. And then, um, and then we're gonna have this interaction function do the actual work of being interacted, and then later when we have, you know, ray tracing and, and E button click whatever um, interactions like like Stardew Valley or similar, then uh, we'll we'll just replace the click handler and have this called that way. So we shouldn't. Um, I don't think we'll need to update and start for now. We might later. I is it I click handler mouse no mouse capture event i pointer click handler and then what else is great about this company implement missing members we have on pointer click i believe that should work we're just going to again i will remind you that i have not done this in a long time so i'm kind of just making this up and going by what i remember there's going to be lots of googling which is pretty common in, in most tech industry stuff. Clicked. We're going to save that. And then we're going to play. Where is our log? Window, general, console. It's over here. Okay, so I'm clicking, I'm clicking. Oh, I'm not clicking. Is this the game window? It is. I'm clicking and it doesn't, doesn't like it. Not working, that's okay. All right, so how do we make this clickable? Um, Right, clickable, unity. This, that seems wrong. One thing that is, is interesting about using a tool like Unity is that if you ever want to uh, look for something, a lot of times you'll see stuff from, I mean, the first 10 things will be videos that I don't feel like watching. And then the next 10 will be from, you know, seven, eight years ago. That may not even be accurate anymore. So uh, we'll do a little fun Googling past year. Click events. We'll just say game object. We 
maybe that'll be better. There we go, 2021, pretty sweet. Nope, nobody responded, awesome. <laughs> Just on mouse down, is that accurate? Not called. Interesting. Okay, so maybe we don't need this interface at all. Let's try on mouse down. Now, I know that this actually isn't ideal. On mouse down is kind of a bad uh, user experience. Sometimes you'll click on something and then you decide you don't want to click on that and you just drag off and uh, you know figure your life out. But uh, you know, obviously you can't do that. Did I get it? Cool. Alright, I don't know what that was about. Try playing again. It was letting me switch my screens, which was really weird. And we go click, 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 click. I close the debug window because I'm an idiot. Still nothing. Is it the position of this sprite that it doesn't like? Planter. It says you're intractable. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. If you know, if you're paying attention and you know what, what I'm doing wrong, uh, this is gonna be a long journey. I don't even know how to make things be clicked, but that's okay. Once we get into over the collider. Oh, you have to have a collider. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, cool. So let's it's a box collider 2D. I wonder if that will make this better. Realistically, everything that we would click on will probably have to have a collider, although it might not interact directly with, with the sprite that we have. For example, some of our displays or wires and stuff. Click, still nothing. Very sad. Interesting. All scripts of the game object with a collider. Really doesn't like this. That's very interesting. Maybe I have to have. No, that's that's the size. <laughs> curious, curious. We'll get rid of I point or click, maybe. I know that's really stupid, but sometimes things interact with each other weirdly. All right, this will be the last one, and then maybe we'll just try something entirely different. Or we'll take a break, and we'll, not like a literal break, but we'll move on. Um, oh, oh yeah, we got mouse down. We got our, look at that, exciting. It's now it's weird that there's two of them. Is one of them Huh. Cool. Alright, so we have our clicker. So all we want to do here is call interaction. Inter oops, not there, obviously. Interaction. And maybe for sanity, we'll do something like this fixed date. Bool was clicked. I obviously don't want that. Why are you complaining to me? Never used, um, classic. Okay, so what we're gonna do is on most click, we're gonna set was clicked. 
equals true. And then on fixed update, we're going to go if, if was clicked, was clicked equals false interaction. And that's just going to give us a little bit of a buffer so that we're not collecting a billion click interactions. Um, interacted. Ah, oh, there's two because I didn't clear it. Look at that. Interacted. Amazing. Okay, so this is going to be a really simple script. We're not going to use this too much for now. Um, what we're going to do with this is, yes, it's angry because there's a log in here, and apparently that's really expensive, which is weird to me. But I guess, I guess anything that interacts with the editor itself is probably expensive. So... Uh, we actually are going to add the start. Start. And we're gonna do something like private. We'll make an interface called interactable. I mean, this is the interactable. Um, but we're gonna make an interface called interactable. We'll come back to that. Interactable. And then we're going to say, um, can you get a component with an interface? I don't know. But we're going to go, uh, oh, maybe this might, uh, we might actually want this to be a list. And so what we're going to do is, I wonder if, <laughs> if maybe the, a better way to do this is to have have the, um, we'll do like an event system and we'll have the elements uh, <clears throat> register themselves as, as interacted. So we'll get rid of that. Um, so we'll go public void register interactable. Again, we're going to call this interactable. Uh, nope. And it says it doesn't like it because we don't have that yet. That's okay. And then we're going to have a list. Private. List. Interactable. Uh, interactables. Excellent. Thank you. And then we're going to say interactables. Add. Interactable. And then here in interaction, we're just going to loop through this list. Uh, interactables dot each for each. Oh boy. It's concerning now that I've forgotten how. Uh, list for each, the format. The problem when you switch between languages is that you sometimes forget. Okay, we could just do a regular for each. Maybe that's better. I bet if I do that, it will just fix it. We'll just go for each. Yeah, uh, interactables. Yeah. Interactable. And then we'll go. Uh, interactable dot what should we call it I mean trigger seems interact that seems like a dumb method but that's okay how does this is interactable not a word I feel like it should be All right so here we're just going to create a new script add uh, oh, C class interface interface we're gonna call it interactable. There is, sometimes people will call these like I interactable for an interface. Um, it's pretty common in the biz, as they say. Why are you, are you gonna complain about that? Oh, no. 
Oh, that's funny. Rude. Okay, I wasn't going to do it, but I guess I'm going to do it. Um, why? Pub oh, public function. Don't have to do that in C sharp. Public, void, interact. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so the problem when you switch between languages is that you sometimes forget uh, the syntax, and that's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, you just have to look it up, and then you get used to it again. And then I'll go back to my regular job, and I'll forget how to write PHP code, and that's okay. Okay, so now we're just going to have this component on anything we want to be able to interact with. It apparently also has to have a box collider, which again shouldn't be a problem, but we'll just have to remember that. Maybe I'll put it in the interactable script. Um, note, this only works on uh, game objects with a collider. Temporary method to allow clicking objects that will be interactable later. Cool. So uh, yeah, so maybe we might even end up replacing this entire thing later, depending on how our interaction script works. But that's okay. That's why we keep these relatively simple. Um, and so we're going to create, or we have an interactable method. Uh, sorry, our, our yeah, interface. And uh, then we're going to create some... <laughs> Some structures, some buildings. So what what is this going going to be? One thing I think is really great about these survival type games is that a lot of times you have ah, that's why I'm putting the wrong one. Is that a lot of times you have these um, just these lists and lists of of different things like minerals and sorry resources and buildings and all that kind of stuff and and so you can you can quickly enumerate those uh, with scriptable objects so we're gonna try and do that to the best of my ability um, so yeah so let's just say for now that we have our we're gonna look at our uh, Trello board. And did I? I didn't actually make a thing for that. That's okay. So we're just going to make a new card. Um, temporary interactable interface uh, clicking. So that's done. Pretty simple, silly thing. We just want to make sure that we keep track of it so we know what we've worked on. Um, so yeah, so actually what we'll do is we'll just start from the top. So we're working on the interior. So we'll say we're gonna click on, oh, we don't need this card, go away. We're working on the interior manager, okay? So the interior manager is going to be uh, something of a, well, it's gonna exist on the scene and it is gonna manage everything that has to do with the interior of this, um, this scene. So anytime you're inside any of the buildings, you're going to have an interior manager that's going to manage all the, the stuff that, that, that's happening outside, really. They're going to tell you, um, you know, what kind of, how much water is flowing in, how much power is flowing in. Um, we might have a map manager as well that will build these maps for us, because obviously, uh, you know, this is hard coded. We just kind of drew this tile map ourselves for testing. This is our, our, our uh, vertical slice. but. 
but we will have to be able to store these maps somewhere uh, more meaningfully. Um, the dream is that you'll have you know your little main kind of base here that you fill in, and then and then you say to the engineer, "Hey, um, can you build me?" A larger greenhouse and then you'll have a little tube that will go off this side and it'll have the the, man, uh, the greenhouse over here where you can do all your planting and you'll just need to make sure that you have enough water for that uh, and and technically you could have disparate buildings that are not connected to each other uh, and so you'd have to leave and hop over to a different building um, and maybe there's a penalty for that maybe you have to like put your suit on and waste some oxygen or get a little radiation poisoning I don't know we'll, we'll get there but for now we're going to want a manager in this scene that does general inside scene things. So um, I'm not a big fan of, I guess just from from the discipline that I'm in, uh, it feels weird making these sort of weird god objects, but we'll call it the interior. Interior, no, interior manager. Drag that up to the top. We'll add a new script to it. Uh, interior manager, new script, create and add. And this is gonna put it, unfortunately, in our main scripts folder, <coughs> as it seems to be doing, but that's okay. You can actually just click it right from here as well. And that's going to open in here. So we want a couple of things. So the first is that we want, um, I guess a current, <laughs> current, a current power level, a power level, the current current. Um, for now, we'll just have that as, let's say an integer power in, no, how should we do this? So the idea is that as the engineer is building power plants and things like that, that the exterior manager is going to be managing kind of the grid. And some of that power and water is going to be flowing into the main base here. It's also going to be used for other things like the rocket outside. And so the interior of the base is only going to have sort of intermittent power. Pardon me, yawning. Intermittent power and water flowing in. And then obviously you're going to have buildings in here that are using power. And so you need to have a constant maintenance of um, of the, the power flowing. And if you don't have enough or you want to build too much stuff, uh, you have two jobs. The first is to maximize your power efficiency internally, but then also you say to your engineer friend, hey, can you build me more power plants uh, or solar panels or whatever? And he goes, I can, but, you know, it's nighttime. So there's, you know, we need more storage. Can you be... Can you be better at this? And then you yell at your friends. Uh, it's great. Games are fun when you yell at your friends. So. So what we're gonna do is, we're just going to start. We're actually not gonna think about it too much. Um, so what we want is, we definitely want a method to, um, we'll say, Uh, public, uh, yes, I do have to do that. Public void. I guess if I think about it, the outside, realistically, for most purposes, the rate should be consistent. And and it'll, it's more about the change in the rate that's important. So what we're going to want is set power in rate. And then we're gonna go public void set water in rate. And this is gonna tell us how much power and water, you're yellow because I haven't used you. Oh, I forget, uh, C sharp, they like capital letters. We'll have to get used to that. I'm gonna keep screwing it up for the rest of my life. So we're gonna say int power rate private int water rate. Maybe we'll call this water in power in flow. Water in flow. And then 
this will be an in, an int, we'll call that inflow, int inflow, and then power inflow equals inflow. There we go. Cool. And then water inflow. And the reason I'm doing this, obviously, is because this will be kind of a feature of the game. But if you saw in my uh, my Trello board here, I'm going to build these fakers. And so what this is going to do is we're going to have a class that's basically going to lie to the interior manager that there's stuff going on outside, which is kind of creepy if you think about it. You're inside this building and, and there's just, there's actually nothing outside. There's literally just an empty void. Um, but the interior manager in Outfaker is just going to uh, mock all of that for you and say to you, hey, uh, you got you got some power coming, you got some water coming in, and we can adjust those dials so that I can test um, the internal scene without having to worry too much about what's going on outside. Essentially, we're developing three different games here, and then we're connecting them uh, by resource constraints and how they interact with each other, which I think is pretty cool, but I'm biased because I'm doing it. So um, what we're also going to want is now, we want some kind of structure manager. And I wonder if I wrote this down. Did I enter interior? Structure manager. OK. So I think for the purpose of we're going to have some type of list of structures. But those structures are going to have different needs and uses so you know we're going to want to manage their position in the map uh, but then we're also going to want to manage um, power usage water usage things like that uh, if they are greenhouses we're going to want to manage um, you know growth that's what greenhouses do right they grow um, little little uh, flower beds and so what we're going to need um, so maybe what we'll do for now is we will, we'll go private list. I think, I think I have a structure already and I probably shouldn't reuse this one, but, uh, we'll, we'll do it for now and then we'll figure that out. We'll call this structures and we will decide later if we want to either, uh, expand this into different, um, elements or if we want to um, to create a whole structure manager so that this just kind of manages the general input output um, and that the structure manager actually manages the structures, which will probably be where we go just for simplicity. Uh, that way we can actually have a test scene that is just about structures and just lays them out and does all the calculations and stuff. Uh, I'm actually talking myself into it. So uh, do we need a mono behavior for that? I don't think so, but it will be nice. I think we will. We'll do it a mono behavior only because I like having... Worst case, we can remove it later. So... Um... And what we're actually going to do is we're going to take the structure manager uh, and we're going to put it. Why won't you show me my new script? Did I not? Am I looking at the wrong thing? Where did? Oh, yes, I'm looking at scripts. OK. So we're going to look at the structure manager and we're actually going to drag this onto the interior manager as well. And then we're going to have you we're going to have this just grab it uh, on, on update uh, or on uh, <coughs> on awake structure manager. Structure manager. Great. Um, 
I forget in hindsight if uh, if this is uh, bad. Uh, if you should be getting components in start or awake, uh, which one is better? Um, but that's okay. And then, yeah. So we have our structure manager. That is going to uh, keep a list of all of our structures. So we should do that. So we'll do uh, list structure in game modules dot game the fuck is modules that is so weird is it did I, did I do something like weird maybe I have the namespace and then I did something weird where I moved all the files around but didn't change the namespaces that seems like something I would do Yes, view delegates. Okay, so this is a little silly, but that's okay. This is this is interface stuff, so that's not, sorry, user interface stuff, not programming interface stuff. Oh dear, okay, I actually don't know how to fix that. Um, my mic is only in the left ear. I just realized when I'm listening to myself that sometimes I talk like Richard Hendricks from Silicon Valley, just very quickly in tiny little spurts. All right, moving on. Thank you again for pointing out the audio issue. I hope it wasn't too jarring. Um, where were we? So we want a list of structures. Uh, unfortunately, this is not the structure that we want. Um, because this is an interface thing. This is the user interface, pardon me. Uh, so that will be managing our uh, buildings in the, uh, in the view, which I guess is kind of what we want, but this is more about the structure from a script perspective and then how it's interacting with the engine. save that really quick. So what we'll do is we will um, we'll create a new script. I know that we have a billion of these already, but we'll create a new script and call it structure. I believe this should global namespace. Oh, that's interesting. Well, we'll move it into structures and then it will complain again that we're not in the namespace, but that's okay. Yeah, there we go. Best thing about, I mean, one of, I, mean I love this, this software. I love this uh, company. They just do so much, so much work for you. Like, I think I'm even writing worse code because I know that it's going to fix it for me, or it's going to tell me that it's broken and then it'll help me fix it. So we have our a structure here. We will come back to that later. Um, so we're going to go back to the structure manager. And here we are going to have a list of structures in structures. Why do you not like lists? Did I not import list? I didn't. Cool. Oops, did it for me. Classic. Okay, so here's our structure manager. We have our, our lists. Um, uh, I think, I don't know if I want this to be in the structure folder, but it seems like a good place for it for now. We might end up moving these folders around. I find web development is a lot easier uh, because of how you interface with the web. 
because games are so UX and UI heavy, um, and there's this whole component model that the Unity uses, it's very difficult, uh, at least from what I've seen, to have a consistent, coherent uh, folder structure. And so I end up just making these random, like this was an NVC thing I tried for a bit that I didn't end up loving. The managers and the controllers end up kind of mixing with the view delegates. And so you end up with this sort of like MVVCC thing. It's it's super cool and super weird. But I think the, pro the plan is, again, we only have a week, so we're just going to burn through this as quickly as possible. It's going to be a little bit of a mess. I'm going to try my best to make this... Um, to keep it as clean as possible when I have the option, but we'll go from there. Cool. Let me see if I reply to this person. When's the reply? I hope that, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so we'll go back to our um, interior manager. So what we want is update uh, I don't know if we're gonna have power storage inside the building, but maybe we should. Power grids are really weird in real life. This is just an aside because um, we generate basically all of our power as we're using it in pretty much every power grid. Like there's so little actual storage on power grids. And so what happens is we usually generate a little too much and then just burn a bunch of it off. Um, or, or, you know, we have rolling brownouts, which is crazy to me because if you, if you imagine just how variable your power usage is in, in your home, uh, and so we're probably gonna have to create a similar type of system here where we just every every tick we'll do fixed update because I don't need it to be that specific every tick we're just gonna check uh, how much water's come in how much water is being used by our structure manager um, and maybe that's what we'll go private int water outflow and that's not literally out. It's not going out into the world, but um, we will move these just because, uh, just for consistency. Power in, po water in, power out, water out. <laughs> We're also then going to have to set these values. Public void set power out rate int outflow. rate and outflow. Um, I'm still so hung up on this this audio issue. Uh, I don't know if you're still here, but it seems really, really off put by the audio, which I, I guess I understand. I've had some songs that are like that on my on my old iPod a hundred years ago, but um, oh my god, I can't type. But it's interesting to me that look, it looks like they left. Maybe I'm boring, but maybe the audio issue was so jarring. <laughs> so what we want to do is If power inflow is less than power outflow, um, and then same thing, if water inflow is less than water outflow. So the idea here is that realistically, I mean, I don't really have a plan for what happens if we have too much water, and maybe we'll add that in later. 
But same kind of thing is if we have too much power, we can just ground it. Uh, so you kind of want the power comes in, power comes in, power comes in. You use some of it, and then if you have too much, if you can store it, you store it. If you can't, we get rid of it. Um, but what we're going to do is... Water inflow, water outflow. I wonder if I can make a structure manager faker too. Ooh, I like that maybe a little bit. So maybe structure manager should be an interface. And then we can make a faker for it. Uh, and then this doesn't even have to know that it exists. Ooh, okay. We're gonna make an interface uh, folder because I'm gonna make a lot of interfaces. <laughs> And then we'll figure them out later. So create class interface I structure manager interface. And then I, I know that this isn't, this isn't great, but I structure manager. Um, all right, sorry, I'm back for about a minute, but uh, my dog was barking very aggressively and is still barking. Uh, there's apparently a dog walker in the hallway with a bunch of dogs and he wants to go say hello to all of them oh my god so many photos okay cool all right back at it again with the white vans so so the goal here is that we want the manager to, well, just do the basic management stuff. And we want to be able to uh, pass in the interface. So um, maybe what we'll do is exactly the same thing we were talking about earlier, is we will have um, public void set. This actually feels like really stupid, but structure manager. I structure manager. The, in theory, when the when the uh, structure manager component uh, is loaded, it will add itself to um, Oops. Oh, that's not how that's supposed to work. Wait. Okay. Um, so this will probably be nullable by, by default. Uh, yeah, all right. I don't know if this will work. I don't know if this is a good plan, but the idea is that we want to be able to test the interior manager by itself, by passing in, uh, by faking the inflow and outflow, and then faking uh, the structure manager as well. And then so what we'll do is we'll go, um, <coughs> So all of our structures will have to deal with, I guess, water and power. So we'll do something like um, void handle water underflow int underflow, and then void handle power underflow. And what this is going to do is when we implement these interfaces, uh, we just want we want this method or this uh, class to to do whatever it needs to do if there's not enough if there's not enough power or water. So, for example, we may use the structure manager in the future to manage like a railway system. If there's no power, the rails just stop. Um, but in our case, if we have 
not enough power for, for 10 buildings, well, we can just turn one of them off, uh, depending on how smart our system is. <coughs> Maybe that's something you can research. Maybe at the beginning, we'll have it where everything just shuts off automatically. The whole building browns out. There's not enough current. Maybe they'll get weaker. Individ like Each individual item will just get weaker. I actually realize I don't know how much power works, and I'm basing some of this on oxygen not included. But that's okay. So. Um, we will do really quick uh, public void add structure. Um, now, this is a list. Can I list? Oh. Uh, interesting. Okay, so I should be able to remove items explicitly. I don't need this to be keyed in any way, but if it is, then we'll add, we'll turn this into a dictionary later. Um, so structures.add structure. Cool. So what the structure manager is going to do is you add and remove all the structures. It's going to do the compilation of um, the inflow outflow. And then we'll go from there. So uh, maybe we'll do fixed update, fixed update, uh, calculate. Water. I don't know why I keep doing water first. I started with power first. Maybe I should do them all. Go back and change them all to power first, and then I'll start doing it. Um, calculate power. And then update uh, parent, I guess. Or. Ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. I guess we want the structure manager to be independent, right? So we'll have to also get um, get power inflow void get water inflow. I know. Uh, and these should not be voids, they should be ints. These are, we're probably going to be using um, some minor value, like kilojoules uh, or something. Uh, but it's just integer arithmetic is a lot easier than floating point arithmetic for computers and uh, for people. And so we'll just do some last minute division if we need, if we need to divide it. Cool. So get water inflow, get water, uh, get power inflow. Great. Power, water, power, water. Um, cool. So let's just say for now the inflow is uh, 100. Return 100. And then we'll just go debug. This is actually a terrible idea because if it's under, it's going to get angry at me. <laughs> uh, power underflow buildings. Shutting, shitting, shutting down. And then same thing. Water underflow buildings shutting down. Um, private int power usage, private int water usage. It's going to get angry at me again because I didn't put the under. I 
to write down. Oh. All right, so what we'll do is on update, we'll set power usage. Um, so here's what we're gonna do, we're gonna go uh, power usage. Water usage. Why don't you get a... Um, we're gonna change this, because I think continuously using inflow and outflow is, is very complicated. Uh, water usage. Um, cool. And then we'll say, just say these are 100 for now. Uh, one moment. All right, so there's now a dog in the office with me. Uh, so if he starts squeaking or barking, um, it's not too, Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm just gonna turn my mic. I wonder if there's a way I can, um, change the high pass or something. <laughs> hmm. Unclear. Well, I apologize if he's too loud. Maybe, maybe turn me down or mute me I don't know I know it's not great for my viewer rating but we'll have to uh, what if I can make it like a little text field that just says main screen and add text So creepy. Sorry, I'm looking at other Twitch streamers to see. This is actually a pretty popular channel, or, uh, or whatever. Uh, obviously, I'm not a popular channel, pardon me. It's a popular uh, category. <laughs> I'm not even on the list. Sad. Oh well, it's not a big deal. Someday I'll be, I'll get 30 viewers. Oh, Mort Mort is doing some stencil. Oh, this is Mort Mort. Oh, that's creepy. He has this weird monkey face on. All right, let's stop looking at other people's streams and uh, continue working on mine. <laughs> okay, so we're back at it. What should we decide we're gonna work on now? Maybe we'll do our structures. So we're gonna want to come up with our uh, structure sprites. And so for now, we're going to put them in um, our scriptable objects. <laughs> Interior. Create a new scriptable object. Oh. So I reckon that you can probably, you can attach more than one scriptable object to a particular uh, sprite, which which is cool. So what we wanna do is we wanna add a new C-sharp script. 
Um, and we're going to call this structure. And the only thing we want, okay, we don't need to be in the global namespace then. That's fine. Um, oh, I'm looking at OBS. Uh, we don't need this to be in the global namespace, so we're going to move it to interior. That will make it less angry. We're going to change this to scriptable object. I'm just going to open up another scriptable object because I forget how this works. Um, oh, I just realized. Okay, so we're going to do this here. Nope. Actually, can scriptable objects consumer structure or scriptable object? Oh, I already have one. Oh, silly, silly, silly. Okay, so let's get rid of this guy. And we're going to use this. So structure name, height, width, sprite, inventory, space. That's actually pretty cool. And then what we want to do is I wonder if I can. If there's any way that I can um, uh, tell it what, what function to run when it's clicked. Probably not. Um, method? No. Uh, scriptable objects are pretty simple. Uh, add to scriptable object. Obviously, that's not what I want. Um, Add custom function. Virtual? Just implement. You need most cards without final at the base class. Make them as a virtual. Okay, maybe what we'll do for now is we'll just put, uh, put a string here. Click interact method. Although, <laughs> ultimately, that's not going to be the goal, but hmm. <clears throat> the thing is, you still need a game object. So what we're going to need is uh, we're going to need like something called a base structure, maybe. I'm trying to minimize the number of prefabs I'm using, which which, which might not be the best plan, but maybe what we'll do is we'll go close packages. Um, did I get rid of the interior? No. structures. Okay. Oh, this was our new one. Okay, so um, we're gonna add a folder, I call this interior. So these are interior structures. This was the structure class that we just created. Um, doesn't seem to like never instantiate it. That's okay. What we're going to want here is structure s o Uh, base data. That's fine. Okay. Um, and then what we need is uh, we're going to go private. Um, I'm wondering what the best way to do about, to go about this is. Is, is should we have because not every building is going to be a water consumer, power consumer, etc. And we can handle that by making them nullable. 
we can also handle that by extending the structure. The only problem I have with that is that some things will be both power consumers and water consumers. And so if we try and just extend the class, then we'll have to have different classes. Like, as far as I know, C-sharp is a single inheritance language. And so we'll only be able to inherit one value. Although I could be wrong. Maybe I'm already just off to, I'm off on the wrong foot. Um, multiple inheritance in C sharp. C sharp does not support multiple inheritance, huzzah. Okay, so I was right, not in a way that is helpful to me, but what we'll end up having to do, if we do it that way, we'll have to have something called like water consuming structure and, or like just water structure, power structure, and then something like water and power structure, which is, I don't know, kind of weird. Alternatively, what we can do is we can have like water consumer um, SO uh, and then just have this um, water consumption data and then just have this nullable. And so any structure can consume water or power or whatever and we'll just have these kind of set to, to zero. Uh, although now I draw per second. Interesting. Sometimes I wonder if I'm just too, like just being too clever for my own good. Not that I am too clever, but that, you know. And it will have a bunch of different structures and we'll be able to spin them up based on um, this base data here. So it'll have the name, the height, the width, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this sprite uh, will also maybe want public sprite, no, image. I don't remember if this is uh, image or image icon, but, um, but yeah. So then we're gonna start spinning up different types of consumers. Actually, shit. <laughs> I've worked myself into a corner here because if you noticed earlier, the consumer is actually a type of structure. So I can't actually have both. Um, didn't really think that through, uh, that's fine. Um, maybe we'll have to think about this a little bit. So what I'm probably going to do for some of this is that like, this is the first day of the week. We're getting as much done as we can from the list. And then we're going to... Like I'm gonna kind of come up with some things I need to figure out. Maybe we'll make a list things to figure out. Uh, and then we're gonna add some cards here. Just the things I can think about kind of in the evenings when I'm not working, just to kind of noodle around while I'm watching TV or eating dinner, all that jazz. Um, so maybe what we'll work on is the UI for now, because I know more or less what I want that to look like. And it's this, kind of, pretty straightforward. Um, so we will need, again, a UI manager. Um, and then that data will have to come from somewhere. And we'll probably make another faker for that, just for now. And then, yeah, maybe that's what we'll do. Okay, so um, now here's the question is, do I even care about my scene? Like, does it have to, do I have to have the UI here? Probably not. And what I might do is maybe just make a new scene 
that will have nothing in it. Build test scene initializer. Oh, okay. Um, we're gonna make a new scene, create scene UI test scene. Uh, and the reason we're doing this is just because I don't want canvas. Oh, bully. Um, main UI. Oops. Uh, static HUD. There's performance issues if you have too many items in one canvas. Um, canvases get updated when they're told to be updated, and so if you have a whole bunch of images that never get updated, like backgrounds and stuff, uh, and you keep them in the same canvas as things like your health bars and the time that, that tick, you know, constantly, then you end up um, you end up redoing a bunch of work you don't need to do. And so we're gonna make a few different canvases that do different things. Game object, uh, UI, canvas. Um, move this up here. And then uh, we'll just say like button menu we'll just make an empty game object called canvases cool so this will be not static why do I keep calling it that <coughs> um, Dynamic HUD. Um, we'll add another canvas for like. Uh, um, what do they call that? I want to say interaction, but that's not correct. Um, feedback. So this will be like we'll have pop up menus and stuff uh, or warnings, anything that would show up that's like, hey, you know, you're going to die. Uh, yeah, so the bottom menu will have the button menu. Pardon me, will have all the buttons in it. So if you look here, you'll have we'll have this guy here with the buttons, and then the dynamic HUD will probably be this part at the top. And this is going to get updated regularly with health and values and all that kind of stuff. Um, I maybe we'll just make this static for now. But just say day one, not do anything interesting. Um, yeah. So what we want is. <coughs> We need a couple objects here. So we'll call this the game UI manager. That seems like a bad idea, but that's okay. Another God object. We'll call this the UI manager. No. See, I don't even like that already. HUD manager. Oh, I have a HUD manager. Do I? Mm, that's from the old, the old one. Um, remove component. <laughs> Call this the HUD manager. Managet. New script. Create an ad. <coughs> We'll rename this to HUD Manager, and I think um, we might end up changing that a little bit. Okay, so here we want we have a couple different things. So, um, the problem with UI development is that it's so tedious. Like, there's so many little things you have to manage. So we're gonna have to make our individual components. We're gonna have to make um, this thing, this little box here. We might actually have to make a copy of the box for our friends. Um, so yeah, I'm not looking forward to that, but do I have interfaces no that's actual interfaces um, all right let's do let's make a new folder we'll call it hood and then we'll move the hud manager in here and then 
this will get angry at us and tell us to do that. Info panel. Oh, that's... Okay, so, uh, I just realized that I made these as text fields, and I don't want them to be text fields. I want them to be text mesh pro. Not use text is already added. Okay, so we have to remove the text. Sad. Okay, and then now this is gonna be character name. Makes it bigger. Change the font size to 26, I guess. Um, at this point, like I, you know, there's there's a lot of like formatting and stuff. We're gonna add some like layout groups and grids and stuff, which is you know fun, I guess. But but for now, we're not. We're just gonna move this here. So health is gonna be first. I don't know what health is even gonna mean. Um, Uh, UI text mesh pro. So this will be health. Copy, paste, paste, paste. Hunger. Heat. And first. Still funny. All right. So um, we're gonna take health and we're gonna move it down here. We take hunger and move it down here. Thirst, I think, will be third. Okay, so this will be red. So we want this to say a hundred. Change them all to a hundred. Should have done this before. Okay. Really quickly, we're going to add or create a uh, UI. Oh, can I do a group here? No. Uh, we'll just make an empty game object. We'll grab these guys, drop them in here. Uh, we're gonna add some type of layout. Horizontal layout group, excellent. Um, we're gonna bring this down here, bring this over here. I don't know why you guys are so, why you're so weird. Um, and then really quickly, we're gonna make these all centered. Can I do that with all of them at the same time? Oh, I can, what a waste of time this has all been. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, great. So it's not the nicest thing in the world, but it's something. Let's just move the character name over a little bit. Maybe center it down. Uh, center this. Okay, terrible. Looks terrible, but that's okay. Um, we're just going to change the colors. So this is going to be red. Hunger can be green. Because, you know, food is green sometimes. Heat will be orange, yellow, I guess. Thirst will be blue. Uh, lighter blue. And then heat will be orange, yellow. Cool. All right. Cool. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to grab the layout. We want to add the component, and this will be um, character panel. So this is the new one I just created. Yes. Okay. Cool. So. Um, you want your interfaces to be as st stupid as possible. So we're gonna go, um, I, character, vitals, vitals, Ina, um, 
I understand that. And then fixed update. Oh, we also need the elements. Okay, so text, mesh, pro, GUI, UI, uh, name, tag. Boop, 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 boop. Health tag, hunger tag. I don't know how people do this. Like this, this part, the UI stuff for me is just. Um, eat tag, and then I'm gonna change. I'm just gonna call it thirst here because it's, you know coding should be more strict and less. You can certainly be silly in code, but um, for those of us uh, who, you know just just joining me in the last couple minutes, uh, I'm on vacation, so I'm starting. A new little game project. I have a lot of it on paper, um, and I'm trying to burn through as much of it as I can in a week. Something like a game jam. I'm cutting a lot of corners. I'm just trying to get something relatively playable. So we're working on the UI right now. Um, there's a couple things we'd started working on with some of our scenes, and I realized I hadn't thought them out too much. So we're just going to burn through some of the UI stuff now, and then we're going to come back later. So. Um, so we all want this, these to be serializable, right? Serialize field, copy that. You can tell how bad my ADHD is that I stopped working to explain something and then couldn't even focus long enough to actually explain it. Um, so the name tag, that's fine. We'll leave that for now. Um, character vitals shouldn't have any of that extra info because it's just about the vitals. So we're going to go uh, on fixed update health tag dot text is equal to vitals dot get health. What's your problem? Oh. Is there a better way than doing this? I don't know, but that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Hunger tag, eat tag, oops, thirst tag, eat tag. Oh my God, eat and health start the same way. Silly, silly, get hunger, I know, get thirst get uh, temperature <laughs> in fact I wonder if we start if we do this right now is it actually going to I don't think I've added I didn't actually set a object reference on set to object yes I figured that was the case okay so we need our character faker. Did we do that already? We did. Character vitals faker. Okay. So we're going to throw that onto um, awake. Okay. So what I was actually saying before, uh, I realize I realize you have not been watching my thing. I got distracted. Um, OBS. Okay. <coughs> So uh, I just set all this up. Honestly, UI is so boring. Um, I apologize if you enjoy UI and that it's you know your life and stuff, but uh, I just find it a lot of copying and pasting. So basically, we just set up these text mess pro uh, values. Um, oh, I just realized I have to add them. I have to drag and drop them, don't I? So we're going to look at the layout. We have this here. We need to copy our uh, name tag goes there. Health, oops. No, we're gonna lock this. For a second, health tag, hunger tag, thirst tag, and heat tag. Okay, so that's locked in. We also need to add um, our character. We call it vital. Are you not a mono behavior? Is that my problem? 